up, Cigar Club family? Welcome back to another episode of the Cigar Club podcast. I'm Pew, and along with me, as always, is Griff Howie. Thank you so much for tuning in every week and leaving your thoughts and feedback on each episode. Uh, we do love reading them. I know Griff gets fired up when his name's in the comments, so uh, be oh, sure yes. to drop him some love in the comments for this episode. Uh, if this is your first time joining us, thank you for joining us. Uh, the Cigar Club podcast is where we talk all things cigars uh, with the Cigar Club family every Tuesday at 9 a.m. Eastern. On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about Griff and I's favorite top favorite cigars of 2022. We've got a top 10 list, Griff prepared. Yeah. Uh, but these are going to be cigars that are either new to us, so the first time smoking them, yep. um, or a new release in 2022. So it doesn't necessarily have to be a brand new drop of the year. Um, just new cigars that we've smoked this year. Yep. Um, so, but before we get into it, though, Griff, what are you smoking? How are you doing? What's going on? We look like we're uh, in the same location. Top of the morning to you, Pew. Uh, I am cold. It's probably the coldest day we've had in quite some time and it's also raining so i've got the heater going up my pants and Ooh, a little cross breeze over my shoulders and usps is pulling up as we speak Ooh, any holiday goodies i think i got a cigar club box coming you do i Actually, did I think you, I something. Do. <laughs> you should uh yeah you got a, you got a goodie i sent you some goodies Ooh. um but we are smoking the final December 2022 customs release. I can see my breath. It's not smoke. Uh, Vecino. <laughs> and this cigar has been rolled and anxiously awaiting, awaited by me. Um, shit. Hold on. I got to talk to her. Well, I'll we'll wait, Griff, to get some goodies there. Um, we are smoking the December 2022 Customs Vecino. Um, give you a little blend, blend breakdown. Six by 50 uh, Toro Mexican wrapper. We've got Mexican filler. Um, in the binder, we've got Dominican Piloto Cubano, Dominican Oloro, and uh, Dominican Corojo. So we've got this thing jam-packed for the cold winter season. Um, I'll let Griff kind of explain his thought process when he gets back behind this blend and, and kind of the reasoning behind it. But um, this is a cigar that we certainly wanted to um, counteract the cold holiday seasons. Um, definitely a profile that's straight up Griff's alley in terms of flavors, body, um, strength, probably medium plus and may ramp up to full here. But this is the first time I've smoked it. Um, certainly the first time that I've smoked it with that gorgeous Vecino band. This cigar, our thoughts going into the cigar, I should say. Uh, something extremely approachable, but more on the, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like strength wise? Uh, like trying to pull plus. you maybe out of your wheelhouse a little bit. Yeah. Um, this cigar, as we're smoking here, it's 10 where you are. It's 11 in the morning where we are. Uh, it is a dark Maduro. Mm -hmm. Very rich in flavor, not rich in strength or full bodied in strength, if, if you yeah, will. Yeah, right now I think it's a medium, medium plus. <laughs> yeah, and I've, I've got nothing up. on my stomach, which I love to do and see how I react. Mm -hmm. But um, obviously it's it's maybe for 80% of our consumers, it's kind of cold where you are. December is the perfect month for higher proof bourbons, dark coffee, yep. in my case, you know, Maduro's, and I'm pairing it with also with the dark coffee. Yep. Um so it was something that we wanted to create for the time of year, but also to give either to your family member, your friend, your brother, your sister, grandma, grandpa, whoever, that maybe or may love Maduro's. Um, I was deathly afraid of Maduro's when I first started smoking cigars. Yep. Obviously, there's this um, uh Intimidation factor, yeah, almost uh, like right. the colors uh, themselves. It's like, oh god, that looks yeah, yeah. Um, so this is a prime example of look. It is Maduro. It is dark. It's not the darkest Maduro by any means, but it's not gonna, you know, make you fall flat on your face and give you this crazy nicotine buzz. So um, I would encourage you. P would encourage you. We'd all encourage you mm -hmm. to smoke one of these. Invite someone over. Uh, there's just so much crazy shit going on in the world right now, and uh, have a good time with them. They may love Maduro's if that's the case, then hopefully they love this. And if not, mm, 
well, time to expand your horizons a little bit and try it. And maybe it is for you, maybe it's not. But uh, it's super approachable by, I think, anybody in their cigar smoking, uh, you know, journey stage, state yeah. journey. And uh, it's a really, a really phenomenal blend. And it's been resting for God only knows how long at this point. Not 18 years, but uh, uh, it's been over a year. It almost has a year on it now. Yeah. yeah. I think these were rolled probably December of last year um, or January when the factory opened back up. So yeah. almost a full year on these bad boys. And I, I can't remember to your point of, of if you don't like Maduro's. I can't remember the first Maduro that I smoked. Uh, it probably wasn't yeah. anything grand. No, And I think if you smoke a, I don't want to say a lower quality Maduro because I don't want to poo-poo on any brands, but maybe one that isn't as thoughtfully put together, uh, they can be overpowering. They can sure. be just full strength, kicks you on yeah. your ass, and yeah. you can't recover from it. And then from there, you've got this impression that Maduros are... are you know, just not for you. Um, just like all things in life, our palates, our taste preferences, we change over time. Um, and so maybe if you started smoking or, or tried a Maduro when you first started smoking, uh, and now you've smoked for maybe a year or two or however long, go back and try a Maduro again. Grab, yeah, treat good. yourself to something. It is really good. Um, if it's Vecino, hey, great. Yeah. Thank you. But if it's not, you know, certainly look towards a, a good Maduro griff. I think you would probably say um, Rodriguez uh yeah 84 maduro uh i'm trying that's to like an outlier almost like it's just not even it's just that good fair magic toast um, would be another one yeah. like there's um uh, trying to think of one more to me it's like if i'm getting up in the morning and gonna have a cigar I, well i take that back it it so depends on the time and the day and how i'm feeling and what's on the docket etc cetera, etc cetera. but obviously i don't ever really smoke connecticut's ever yeah. I mean, I had one this week, actually, believe it or not, the Warped Villa Sombra from 2015, which was yeah, I'm, unreal. I'm still salty. About uh, but did not taste, taste like Connecticut. But it's like, no. okay, I've got a Connecticut and a Maduro. And I know this Maduro is super full flavor, complex. Uh, and then here we have the Connecticut. I'm going to, if I'm going to spend the time to smoke a cigar, this is just me personally, um, I'm going to want to enjoy every second of it and yeah to me the connecticut's just excuse me get a little repetitive and and flat so yeah i mean i, Teach I don't their disagree own. with that um but also if someone was like hey smoke this connecticut it's really good you're not gonna mm -hmm. you're not gonna pass it up potentially pass it up um because you're not a fan of connecticut's you're just yeah when you have your own choice, you're you're probably going to choose something on the medium medium plus side. Yeah, um, but exactly. I believe the naming Vecino and correct me if I'm wrong because this was your your baby. Um, porch front porch in Italian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, although when you look it up, there's like you know 35 different. There's always yeah definitions, so that really screws me. But um, yes, uh, you know, up until about a month ago, I would say I, I, you can see my new layer, which is just a white wall. But it's in my garage because it's cold. I'm, you know, in the Pensacola days and in the fall and summer days here in Greenville, I'm on the porch always. Either yeah. smoking a cigar or not, more or less smoking a cigar. Uh, and my neighbors, if I'm on the front porch, they know I'm out there. Uh, and on the back porch, it's if I don't want to be bothered. But I'm always <laughs> on the porch. I love being outside and love being mm -hmm. on the porch. Um, and there's nothing more that I love than having a cigar in some bourbon, either by myself or with some friends. This time of year, with some friends, hand them this cigar and get deep. Just yeah. ask them get all it. their Once deepest. Once that bourbon secrets. starts to warm you up a little bit, the solo yeah. stove fire starts to really ember. As much uh, as I'd love to pour some, some bourbon right now, I'm still enjoying coffee, and I'm not going to. Maybe, maybe later today. But this would just. I got a long day of work some, ahead of me. I'm not drinking great bourbon, bourbon at ten in the morning, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I want to drink this with some Jack Daniels uh, Barrel Proof or yeah. ASW Fiddler 107, like something on the not too, too high of proof. But yeah, right now, actually, I don't think anything over like, you know, one teens, mm -hmm. 115, 118, 120 would be probably the max I would go. Yeah, like a uh, high-end Elijah Craig barrel proof would be just overshadowing this cigar. Yes. Um, yeah. Because of the bourbon, not because of the cigar. Yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah, don't talk to you. Seven range, I think, would also be perfect. Yeah, you were talking about 
having people out on your back porch or front porch. And I think every time you smoke a, a cigar and post it on Instagram of you on your front porch or back porch, it's usually a downward shot. Yeah. And I see about two other, two or three other pairs of legs yeah. outside of your own. And, and that's when I know you're, you're cooking up. Or a it's good just night. my big thigh. Well, uh, you're talking to the king of big thighs I mean, here. I don't want to hear it. The thigh is always there because usually I'm in shorts, but, um, yeah, it's just it's it's my go to spot. People mm -hmm. sometimes fully smoke in the garage, and Sam's getting kicked out of the garage. But um, <laughs> and right now, this is my only spot because it is kind of windy, and at least yeah. there's some some barrier protection. But um, I don't. know. I'm going to bring some of these up to Maryland. We're leaving on Sunday, and um, this cigar is just for this time of year. It's it's perfect, awesome, which is why we also planned it this way. Yep. Connecticut right now would suck. So, <laughs> well, I don't know. You said that I was going to smoke one this morning, but uh, there was mm. there was a little too much on the docket. Although, but. yeah, I mean, it, again, it depends. Like, it's colder here than where you are. I don't know what it is. What's your temperature? Like Ninety degrees there yesterday. I thought. <coughs> I don't know. I think it's, it's in the forties. Yeah, you're definitely. It's uh, fifty-five this morning. Yeah, or right now. So yeah. Mm. So. But that's it, folks. December 2022 Customs Vicino. Uh, it's. I really hope you like it. It is really, really yeah. good, in my opinion. And I opinion. think this cigar, if you've got two five-packs, if you only have one five-pack, get you another five-pack. But if you have two five-packs, um, put some away. Let these sleep for another year. Come back out. And yeah. uh, I mean, this, this cigar is only going to get better with age. Those flavors will mature, but also at the same time, tone down just a uh, just a hair. And yeah. I think this cigar in fall, I'm looking forward to revisiting this cigar in fall and seeing yeah. just kind of the progression that it's had with a year and a half, almost two years of age on it. That's the one thing I do like about Maduro's Connecticut's to me tend to not age as beautifully or elegantly yeah. as a cigar that has a higher oil content, which is able to, to rest um, nicely. Beautiful but, construction, beautiful ash, amazing draw, mm -hmm. all per normal. Uh, yeah, there's no I love looking there. at the white ash and seeing the, I don't know the technical term and I kind of feel dumb for the not knowing tooth? that, but I, I guess it is just technically burnt tooth, which sounds very weird. Yeah. And but, essentially when you've got a, a toothy uh, ash or even a toothy wrapper, um, and what we're referring to is just the little bumps on the, uh, ash or on the wrapper. That's just due to the high oil content of, um, the wrapper that's used. And so as that burns or before it burns, just kind of leaves this, this bumpy, uh, bumpy bumps. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but before we do jump into the top 10, um, if you haven't already, Reserva 710 is out now. Um, this is our most exclusive cigar that we have ever done before. Uh, we were approached uh, by La Polina <clears throat> at PCA 2022. If you watched that podcast recap, we briefly mentioned it. Couldn't go into too many details at the time, but it has been a long six months, highly anticipated by Griff and I and Ramsey and all the crew over here uh, to get our hands on this cigar again, because we only smoked it once at PCA. Uh, but yeah. more importantly, to get it into the hands of y'all, this is a cigar that aged for a minimum of 18 years. Uh, and it's unlike anything that we've ever smoked before. We did a podcast. I believe it was the last podcast uh, where Griff and I were both smoking it. So if you haven't watched that one, go back and um, watch that one. You get an idea of what this cigar has to offer, bring to the table. This is a wonderful treat yourself cigar. Uh, this is a unique cigar that you could gift any cigar giver uh, and not have to worry about have they smoked this cigar before. They'll never smoke it, something like this again. Um, yeah. So it's on our website now. You can pick those up and uh, certainly enjoy. I know I'm going to be smoking one Christmas Day uh, and probably New Year's as well. Yeah, also let us know if, you know, we've been pretty transparent on the tasting notes, in our opinion, what we, what we mm -hmm. pull out of it. Uh, so nothing should be a surprise to you. But... Let us know if you get something else um, or if something came to mind when you're smoking it. I mean, my little rant the other day kind of covers it, in my opinion. But mm -hmm. um, I was talking to Jared at Barrel King, and he's like, what's the what's this 710 deal? And I'm like, so I told him about it. And I'm like, did you watch the short little clip on, on the tasting notes? He's like, yeah. He's like, Dirty Old Socks is literally my favorite yeah I'm no like, shit okay that's that's kind of weird he's like yeah dirty old socks and what else he said some other stuff uh like cow 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 dung uh like barnyard you know, super you know super dirty barnyard Musty. i'm like okay well you're gonna shit yourself then because 
you know, that's this. Um, I got it. the clip that we posted of you going on that little rant to Instagram, YouTube, t- TikTok. Um, I got roasted by Bailey. Why? She goes, how long ago was this one? Your head looks huge. Jeez. I'm like, oh, that was from last week. She goes, nah, and I go, yeah. Yeah, literally like a couple days ago. Yeah. Well, so you, point you need to you need to cut back on your sodium. Head looks huge. I was like, it's uh, it's the editing. Ramsey really got in a tight shot of me. I know. So, Damn, well, there's the New Year's goal: slim the head rough. down. That's rough. Yeah, but mm. not really. Uh, shall we get into the top ten? Let's get into the top ten. I'm proud of you. Well, you haven't given me ten yet. You may go. I only have three. But I'm proud of you for putting a little legwork. Uh, oh, is it 10? To get into this. Jesus. Um, oh, so well, here's some caveats here. And I also have my notes because it's hard to remember these days. Um, like you said, this cigar could have been released in 2002 and it's still in production. And I'm just now getting to it. Uh, or it could be released this year. Uh, caveat two. My personal thoughts and opinions. And when I'm ranking these, I could honestly, if I stared at this sheet long enough, I could probably reorganize it like 20 more times. Yes. So I don't want to hear anything. I can't believe it was number seven. Okay, relax. Plus or minus two on all of these, right? Yeah. Um, so those are the two caveats. And it's a combination of stuff that we've shipped with Cigar Club. And it's a combination of what I smoke at outside of Cigar Club. Yeah. Also, I think there's probably about... 10 other cigars that could have made this top 10 easily. Yeah. And, and the fact it's that it's subjective. in the 10 list, 10 might as well be number one because yeah. they all play the same, uh, you know, rhythm in my. Yeah. And book. so, I mean, I sat down, I had my top 10 going through photos, Instagram memory. Mm-hmm. Um, I tried to take photos of every cigar that I smoked this year, but it certainly did not happen as much as I, I started wanted to, to, but failed. Yeah. And I'm like going through, I was like, wait, didn't I smoke this? Didn't I smoke yeah. that? And then I'm like, yeah, I did. Um, yeah. I think I had, I had my top 10 and then I had like a revised top 10 where I'm moving like two spots this way, two spots that way. And then eventually yeah. I was like, all right, this is it. You know what? I, I could have this be all day and never be happy with it. So top 10, yeah. like you said, is more or less top one. Um, yeah. And really top 20 could have made the top 10 as well. But um, yeah. I'll start us it, off. It's, it's so hard, man. It's it like- is. You know, if you guys are watching, you guys smoke a lot of cigars, too. We do, too. And it's just like, I'm sure. I mean, I'd love to include 30 more on this list because some of them have equal, uh, you know. And the timing of when you smoke it, too, right? Like a cigar that I smoked last January is going to be harder for me to think about than something that I smoked seven days ago. Um, But coming off at number 10, you're going to be shocked at this one. You're going to be mad. I'm also at interested at. if we have any on the list. I, if, if yours is yes, on my list, will. I might not say anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just no, we, we definitely, I would be shocked if at least five aren't crossovers. Um, and you'll be like, oh, can't believe that's at number 10 when it's like your number one or two. Uh, but that for me, it's going to be the Bocock Brothers Signature Edition. Uh, we had this cigar like February, like beginning of the year, I think. I mean, we were the first ones to get our hands remember. on this cigar in the world. Um, heck, we had this cigar before the Bocock brothers themselves had this cigar, which yeah. is really cool. Uh, and uh, AJ Fernandez, wonderful blender. They worked with him to come up with this cigar. And it screams yeah. AJ. It screams yeah. Bocock brothers. If if their previous Traveler World Traveler series did not put them on the map, this cigar yeah, this did. certainly is putting them on the map. Um, yeah. Seeing it all over Instagram, they have a wonderful account where they're reposting cigars um, and, and just seeing this cigar in everyone's hands. Uh, we've had some uh, three and five packs on our site. We may have a couple left on there now. So if you haven't had this cigar, certainly not a plug for it. But if you do want to try this cigar, we do have some. Um, if you haven't, get, your, get it in your local brick and mortar. Like, I mean. Yeah, this time of year is awesome for that cigar. Yes. Um, I would concur. Also, really cool story that it is dedicated to their father, just like the Don Ronaldo with Warped is mm-hmm. dedicated to Kyle's father. Um, pretty cool that you see more and more of that. And it's a damn good cigar to have dedicated to your dad. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Really good cigar. Awesome. Kicking it off with number 10, the Bocock signature. Uh, my number 10, this cigar 
is the cigar that I highly recommend you bring on your dog walk when you're a little blitzed. Ooh. And it's dark, it's small, it's a powerhouse, and that is the Crown Heads Juarez Shots. Yeah. Little four by 50, uh, which is not really a petite Corona. It's like a petite Robusto, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but uh, made up a chardo. Uh, I think technically it was released last year, although we did ship them this year in April. Um, this cigar, talk about an amazing 45 minute smoke. Yeah, it's a lot longer than you think it will. Yeah, or faster or slower, depending on how you smoke. But uh, packed with flavor, it's just, as you know, I love smaller cigars, uh, you know. Depending on or whatever season, it's, it's there's always time sure. for a smaller cigar, and yeah. Mora Shots is just a killer. That's a good one. Y- you know that blend and that size, I could see it potentially going south. But yeah, you think it would be it, this it works. just too packed, too it works, yep, too much for it. Um, but it, it, that blend is beautiful, dude. You're like you said it. I was like, wait, wasn't that 2021? I, yeah, I, this year has blitzed by. Yeah, I mean, I know. it is insane. Thank God I had some of these photos because I would have assumed. I mean, I don't, I don't know. The last three years have been, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> all it's, over the damn place. I haven't smoked in a couple months now. I need to pack that in my bag when I go up to Maryland. Mm-hmm. Um, but phenomenal cigar, great blend, big uh, Crown Heads fan. Yeah, absolutely great, great number ten. Um, coming in at number nine for me, Chogui Dose Seventy Seven. The return of the Chagoe brand. Uh, we were um, fortunate enough, once again, to be able to get these cigars. Uh, I had smoked the original. It was really one of the first boutique brands that I had smoked um, back in 2016. They went away. They hibernated for a little bit mm-hmm. and then uh, came back out again in 2022 with uh, the Chagoe Dose 77, Corojo. And I-, I bought a box of this cigar before... I even tasted it because I knew I needed it. I regretted not having a box of uh, some of the original releases. And I was like, you know what? I'm not going to sleep on this cigar. I've given that cigar out to multiple people who has never heard of this small Mm -hmm. Dominican brand and uh, just blew me away with, with how good of a return that cigar was Uh, wonderful blend. Amazing blend. Amazing blend. Uh, I love that. Fuck, it's so yeah. hard. That's on my list too. I, I could just It's tough. I mean, I bought that box. I got that box in before we um even were bringing those into our boxes. And yeah. I remember I sent you immediately like two or three of those bad boys because I wanted you to try it. Um and then when you yeah. validated and signed off on it, I was like, all right, cool. I, I made the right decision of of jumping the getting these in early. Yeah. I'll save my thoughts for mm-hmm. wherever that may lie on my list. Wherever it may uh, you, this one might surprise you because I would think you might think it's farther up. Um, okay. And again, it it, it it was hard. I struggled with it. it. Is. I struggled with like six through ten. But mm-hmm. um, number nine was the first cigar we smoked a PCA and the last cigar we smoked a PCA. And the only wow. cigar we basically smoked while we were with Bradley in Fort yep. Lauderdale. It's the Alec Bradley Double Broadleaf. I can't wow. say in Grand Robusto because I didn't have it, and I just texted Bradley, and I'm like, as much as I want to say that, I can't say that because I haven't smoked it. Uh, but we smoked in the Robusto, and mm-hmm. it's just a beautiful cigar. The orange and the experimental band, experimental series, yeah, uh, Connecticut broadleaf wrapper in a Connecticut, uh, sorry, in a broadleaf binder, hence the double broadleaf. Yep. Um, it is, it's a great cigar. I was talking to Herb about it, and he's like, oh, man, that one put me on my ass. And I'm like, that's so interesting. I, I, it's 50-50. I hear that it'll – the guy at the shop, too, said the same thing. It has not affected me that way. But um, obviously, I would advise maybe have something on your stomach. But yeah, um, I think it's a phenomenal, super rich, complex coffee, spice, yep. earth. Uh, not the 710 earth, but um, – No, different. 20 – 22 earth and it's just you know (laughs) a really good really good cigar i'm very shocked i would have put that higher up in your list yeah to the point that we've we've made i think i'm gonna have some some ones that you are not even expecting there's a couple on there that you would never believe but i'm excited 
Well, I'm going to roll right into number eight for me. Um, and number eight is going to be the Alec Bradley double broadleaf. Uh, I mean, from the start of PCA, the experience of being in all of PCA, that yeah. being a, an event that I've wanted to attend for over six years now. And so that cigar will always hold a special place as being the first cigar that I smoked at PCA yeah. and the last cigar that I smoked at PCA. Uh, easily one of my favorite Alec Bradley cigars. Certainly one of my favorite Alec Bradley releases. Kintsugi will always be number one for me. Well, that's Alec and Bradley, but I'm right. going to just lump the two. No offense, boys, um, together. But that is that hit every single mark and I think will only get better um, over time, you know, that's a box that you can buy and, and not feel like you need to smoke within the first year. I, yeah. I certainly have boxes and I'm, I'm guilty of this. It's like, Oh, cool. I, I, I want to smoke. I enjoy this cigar, but I also know that I need to smoke this cigar consistently to the point of why yeah. I like 10 count boxes. Cause you're not, yeah. you don't feel like, Oh, this cigar is really just going to lose its ump over time. Yeah. No, you can buy two boxes of, of double broadleaf and that cigar is only going to get better. Um, I am shocked at where it's at. But I'm really yeah. looking forward to, with that being number nine for you, that bar is set high. Yeah. Because I would have put that one through three. Wow. That's the thing, man. There's so many damn good cigars. It's like. It is. It's a great time to be a cigar smoker. i tell you that. Yeah. And I would highly recommend, maybe we'll do a little overview at the very end here. And this could be potentially a little bit of a longer episode. But if I have it on my list and Pew has it on his list and you guys value our input whatsoever, and if you don't, that's completely fine, I would advise, if you haven't smoked it, we might have it, ask us, but uh, yeah. pick it up, because I don't know his list at all, he doesn't know mine, and it says a lot if it's on both of ours. I agree. Because and you smoke a lot of shit that I don't. Same, yeah, and and so, vice versa, you've got a lot of cigars yeah. that I either haven't gotten to yet, or you know, maybe I don't have, or maybe outside my wheelhouse. Um, and there's one thing, and, and as much as we would love to do this, I know I certainly would, Griff certainly would. Um, we've, we've heard the feedback. I know everyone listening would love to have um, a sampler put together by yeah. us of each of our top tens, as much as we would love to do that. Unfortunately, yeah. um, either, you know, it's not feasible just because some of these cigars aren't cigars that we've shipped, or if we have shipped them, we may not have, any, have any more of them. Yeah. Um, so we, we have heard that it, it's something that we would love to do. It's just unfortunately not, not possible. Um, so if there are cigars on our top 10 that either you haven't smoked or really curious about, you can certainly reach out to us, um, or, you know, go onto your favorite online or in your brick and mortar and, uh, pick yourself up a single five pack. I think Neptune does singles, um, your brick and mortar certainly will have singles, um, or you can go small batch, um, Fox cigars, reach out to them. If they don't have it on their website, you know, if you've got an online retailer that you frequent, reach out to them, shoot them an email. Be like, Hey, I'm really interested yeah. in, in this cigar, you know, but I don't want to buy a five pack or a box. They may be able to put together a, a sampler of a bunch of singles for you with this cigar, that cigar, that cigar. And you know, who knows, right? It never hurts to, to shoot them an email. Yeah. Yep. Uh, number Ocho. Yeah, that's eight. I thought I had you figured out. I'm, For a I'm, second. I, I didn't think Ocho was eight. Um, number eight for me. Maybe I'll back into the name. Okay. Rolled at Rivas in DR. Medium, medium plus, depending on where you are. Almonds, spice, chocolatey ice cream. I said it once, I'll say it again. This is the definition of a Dominican Puro. We shipped them in July. It's the Chigui Do 77 Regusto. Gotcha. That's what I thought. Yeah. I it have smoked now for several years, but at one point I was only smoking cigars coming out of Nicaragua. I had this weird mm -hmm. thing against DR cigars. I thought they were campfirey and and you know just they left this yeah. Uh, this cigar, anybody with that mindset has said this on some TikTok or whatever, hand them this cigar. It is so damn good. Victor killed it with this cigar. I'm really excited for if he has anything coming in the pipeline um, because spoiler alert, I will try it. Yeah. No, he's he's got it figured out. I'm so glad he came back and revitalized and, and from the redone artwork bands. Yeah blends 
Um, he's got a couple bl original blends. Um, the one that immediately comes to mind is the Heartbreaker. I absolutely loved that cigar. Um, I'm hoping he brings it back. I think he's bringing it back. I think he may have teased. I'm trying to think, rack my brain. I think he may have teased some artwork or, or he was smoking it a couple months ago. But I hope he bring, brings that yeah. back that blend, whether similar or you know the exact same. That cigar is phenomenal. So looking really forward good. to see what 2023 has uh, for Chugui. Yep, really good. Coming in number seven for me, this is a brand new cigar. This cigar has been around for a while, um, but finally got my hands on it. We did an episode on it, podcast on it. Bits of Havana mm. Robusto. Yep. And gotta be. Gotta be the Robusto. The, uh, that, was, that one you were surprised. That was a fun episode. That, wasn't, that was a really fun episode. The original was what, a Petit Corona? Mm-hmm. And that Which one was the was only one favorite. I smoked. Yes. Yeah. That was your favorite for a while. You had talked about it um, for for a long time now since I've known you about how good that cigar was. And so you were like, you know, let's just do it. We bought a box of the the limited edition Havana, bits yeah. of Havana. We bought yeah. the Robustos and we bought the uh, Petit Coronas or the Coronas. And uh, you were, I think you went in it with a mindset of like, nothing's going to beat that Petit Corona. I yeah, went in, exactly. all three were brand new for me, and we were blown away by how yeah. good that Robusto was. I mean, yeah. it was creamy. I mean, I'm trying to, it was creamy and like almost unexplainable it's just other a, tasting. Yeah. It blew it me is, out of the water. It, it is really good. I think the limited edition Especial, whatever he's calling it, I can't remember the blue label, is going to mm -hmm. be killer in another 8 to 10, 12 months. Yeah, I've, I've got, got that box, box sleeping away. Yeah, it's still cellophane. Um, oh, really? And nice. I'm, I'm excited to break it out down the road because I think it'll be a hitter. Right now, for me, it's not there. But uh, the the robusto and the and the um, bits is killer. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I just uh, love the name. I love the branding. It's a beautiful cigar. I agree. Uh, it, it reminds me a lot of what we're our intention behind customs is in the yeah. idea behind customs. Um, but taking it from, say, the streets of Miami to transporting you to the streets of Havana. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 from the, like you said, the story, the band, the blend, it, it yeah. knocks it out of the park. Yeah. Smoking two blends in different sizes back to back together will tell you and show you a lot. Yeah. I agree. Uh, great, great cigar. Number seven, Hunter and Puro. You smoked it for the first time because I forced you to in Mobile, Alabama. Mm -hmm. I know what this is. Smoked it in a Toro 5x52. It's the Placencia 149 Cosecha. Yes. yes. It's newer. I think it was released this year, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. I Early this well, year, I, I would uh, go out and say that that's my number one Placencia. Because I, I, it yeah. is just so freaking unique. It's it, it's. I was scared of that cigar. Really? Like, I think I think that cigar is what people look at Magic Toast like. Mm. the The wrapper, the contrast of the band on the wrapper, the images online. First off, look darker than the actual cigar is. Yeah. To which is not a, a yeah know, yeah a negative thing or at all. But like, you look at that cigar on the Placencia website. I mean, it, it looks like the top of this lid right here, or, yeah. or my hoodie, just jet black. Um, and so you were like, no, you need to smoke this. I'd been smoking cigars all day. You have talked about it before. And I'm like, man, I don't want to smoke this cigar. But, yeah. you know, we'll take one for the team. <coughs> it's not as... <laughs> it's not. It's 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 like, to me, I mean, it's not the most approachable cigar since he makes. But, you know, Alma Del Campo is was kind yeah. of my top but i'm like same th there there is a time and place for that cigar that is not even for the most full body guys that is not a morning cigar i mean maybe it is with full breakfast but it is yeah. i smoked at the end of the day breakfast. in pensacola and, and had food on my stomach was not drinking alcohol i'm like good god this thing is a freaking powerhouse 149 is probably medium medium plus i wouldn't say anything more than that um but there's something about hunter and puros man it's i, I love them they're so unique and they're so different. And um, for that reason, it made the top 10. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a great number, number seven. Uh, coming in at number six, 
and this one will be surprising only for the fact that I hadn't smoked it before. Okay. Uh, and that's going to be Agonorsa Supreme Leaf. Oh, I was thinking about putting that one on my, on my list. Uh, I had never, I had smoked the rare leaf before, but I had never smoked Supreme Leaf limited release. Uh, just never, you know, nowhere around me has it. And, uh, was skeptical, not skeptical, but just didn't buy a five pack of it. And yep. you were like, Hey, I'm getting a box of Supreme leaf. Do you want it? And I was like, yeah, sure. Why not? That sounds great. You know, so yep. bought it blindly. And, uh, we've talked about it numerous times. That's the yeah. cleanest cigar you will ever smoke. You could smoke an entire box <laughs> throughout yeah. a day, back to back to back. And I don't think you would wake up with a Cotton cigar mouth. breath or yeah. cigar mouth. Yeah. Um, certainly Bailey's favorite cigar that I think she's ever smoked. Um, she's probably upset that I don't have another box or I wasn't able to get the, the I new think release, I have but four left. I, I'll have to text Terry and see what they have, but, um, I think I have four left and I will now include that one in my bag. I always pack mm-hmm. like, you know, 9,000 cigars for like a one day trip. Yeah. Hit or miss if and, I and smoke I, one, but I, was like, like, even I, like if I don't even, <laughs> <laughs> I have it. Yeah. So Bailey's like, you know, we'll be going on like a day trip or, or an yeah. overnight trip and I'll pack you know, like 15 cigars. She's like, you're not going to smoke all these. I was like, yeah, you but never I don't know, know what I'm going to want to smoke. And I would say 90% of the time, I don't think I even smoke a cigar. Yeah, me too. And but it's just like my truck, my truck, you know, humidor yeah. that I talked about. It's, it's got all kinds of stuff from Connecticut's to Maduro's and you never know what you're going to be drinking or mood you're going to be well, in or temperature exactly. and- or, you know, temperature or even like, you know, I'll go to a place and I'm like, oh, there's no way I'm going to smoke here. And then there's an outdoor section where everyone's hanging out at. I'm like, oh yeah. shit. I'm going to smoke here. Yeah. yeah. A lot of times I'm like, man, I'd love to smoke a cigar, but I don't want to leave the event or the party and just yeah. go sit out by myself for two hours when, right. Or an hour or whatever it may be. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a great cigar. <sighs> so uh, I want one now. Damn. <laughs> soft box press and just really damn good. I think the first time I smoked, it was my first trip down to Aganorsa. They were sitting at the table validating a shipment of those. And um, I think it was the Corona Gorda, maybe. And I'm like, shit, it's not just because I'm here. This is, yeah, you can taste it. Yep. It's yep. very good. It's supreme. Tell you it that. is. Pun intended. Yeah, exactly. Uh, number six, a brand we do not carry. Ooh. This cigar specifically may be the first. My first experience with the brand, I think that's accurate. Um, made at Hoya de Nicaragua. It was a 6x54. Very interesting, beautiful band. Anyway. What the hell is it going to be? Uh, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust in Compromiso. Ah, yes, yes. As, as to me, and this is just my personal thought, when you think of Dunbarton, I always think of like super full bodied cigars and it's really mm-hmm. not the case. I was expecting really? this to be more of a full bodied powerhouse, but it's really not. I, I think technically on the, on the scale, if you look this cigar up, it's like straight medium. Um, and I, and I would say that that is about right. I mean, comparing it to like the tricky Chaka, it's, it's definitely not as full bodied as that, but the, the flavor, uh, I mean, it, it's like espresso and cocoa and, um, I mean, fantastic cigar. Um, can't say enough about it. If your local store sells Dunbarton and they have that, I would suggest smoking it. Great time of year to smoke that as well right now. You know, I've got one sitting in my humidor somewhere. You and should so, find it and light it because... I know, and I think I've slept on it because I'm like, I, you know, I'm not in the mood for a full-bodied cigar. Yeah, it's and I not. assumed it's not. it was. Yeah, you would. And so, you know, just looking at it, knowing, you know... But, D&T, again, uh, we smoked the Saka Khan or however you say it that Sam sent us. Yes. Wasn't full-bodied. No, That, that motherfucker was like a Churchill. At least uh, for us. I think, you know, yeah. I think... Well, maybe, maybe it's... Subjective, true. but... Yeah. Because um, I'll give my dad a cigar. And uh, I'm like, oh, you know, he likes mild, mild plus, maybe some medium, you know, but nothing really over medium. I'm like, oh, this is a straight medium. He'll smoke it. And he'll be like, nope, this is putting me on my ass. And I'm like, really? So there is yeah, some subjectivity to it. True. You know, the more you smoke cigars, you kind of build up that tolerance. So, but I look at it and I'm like, ah, oh, man, I just, I don't feel like a full body cigar. So I don't yeah. need to sleep on that one. Um, no, I, I would, I'd light it up this yeah. month. Well, 
I mean, very good. It's I very am good. in the garage. Yeah. Maybe it'll be a post podcast smoke. Yeah. Um, coming in. Well, before we get into the top five, are there one, 10 through six for me, anything that stands out as surprise was on the list or maybe the location of the list? Um, no, not really. I mean, honestly, if I could do another top 10 list, you know, I would have had it, uh, <clears throat> Supreme leaf. Yeah. Um, I mean, Chigui was on the list, and Broadleaf yeah. was double. Broadleaf was on the list. Yeah, um, we did have some. No, I mean, no surprises. I'm curious. To me. Yeah, I, I'm really looking forward to your your top five. Because... I think you could probably guess. Uh, one, two. You'll never guess yeah, my I think... number one. It blew me out of the water oh, really? when I smoked it. Uh, wow, a couple months ago. You'll you'll guess probably. Two out of the five, if I had to guess. Yeah, I have a couple thoughts, and I'm, I'm not, I don't want to say anything to, to give it away. Um, yeah, yeah. I, I think there's definitely a couple that I'm expecting to see on your list. Yeah. Um, and it could be like, oh, you totally forgot about it, right? Like, oh, yeah, you smoked that back in February or, or March, and you're like, oh, shit, yeah. I didn't. And that, that was one. the thing. Like, last year when I did my list, it was, I'll admit, I didn't put the most time. And I put like a solid hour into this, which was a decent amount of time. But I was trying to really think outside the box and look yeah. back up until January, February, March, and not just, you know, the past two months. Because I could do a top 10 list of friggin' November. Yep. Um, so there might be some surprises. Number one will definitely be a surprise to you. I'm excited for it. So coming in, jumping in the top five. Um, this is a cigar, a brand that is making a return. For me from last year, I believe this brand was certainly was top five. It may have been top two or three, <laughs> uh, but that's going to be Byron Cigars. Um, this mm. year is the Petit Poemas. Um, this is undisclosed wrapper, binder, and filler, but it's a uh, it's got five years of age on it. It's a four by fifty. Looks like it would smoke medium plus to full body, but it's a straight medium. Um, but there's pepper, cedar, croissants, cream. Um, I mean, this cigar has absolutely everything under the sun in tasting notes. Wonderful croissant. transitions. I, I love. You give me a buttery croissant in a no. cigar? No, they're overrated. Oh. Croissants are overrated. The no. word annoys me. I don't want to say it. I can't even spell it. Oh if I can't spell God. it, I'm not eating it. No. It's a bunch of air. Oh, look, it's a buttery, no. flaky air. Have no. you seen what it takes to make a here. damn croissant? And that's the part that's annoying. It's probably really complex and hard. It is. Yeah. Well, yes. no, you're wasting your time. You've got a makers. layer, butter, layer, butter. There's a, uh, there's a word for it. Bailey's no. going to watch when give she a, watches this, give me she's immediately going to call Krispy me and Kreme. go, how did you not remember? It's called X. Yeah, um, well, that's, there's so much time into it, but yes, you give me that tasting note. Shame the cigar, on them. I'm there. It's not one that's too often that I'm able to pick up, uh, but this cigar, I definitely get it and great smoke. It's certainly on the more expensive side of things, yeah. but. Um, if you're fortunate enough to find one at your brick and mortar, treat yourself, uh, sit down, enjoy it. Maybe a cappuccino, but nothing or a cortado would go really well with this. A little bit of fat, uh, but nothing that's going to overshine that cigar. Um, really expensive cigar wonderful. for an undisclosed ingredient list. Drop, drop lighter. Drop lighter. Is that the new <laughs> mic drop? Yeah. That's a good and that one. was really loud and almost screwed my cigar up. But no, uh, no hard feelings to your number five. Well, you haven't smoked it, so I don't mind undisclosed. I I love knowing where everything's coming from, but I also understand uh, not like I don't like some it. of the reasons why it's not disclosed. Yeah, because marketing. Um, marketing number five. But if the cigar is good, it's good, and it's good. I would number even five. say, here we go, drum roll. I'm not going to let you get it out. I'm going to say it's damn good. Give me number five, Griff. Yeah, because it tastes like. Give me number Flaky five, Griff. Air dumb bread. Um, is it even considered bread? I don't even know. It probably has its own genre. Um, this cigar you have not smoked. Ooh. I should buy it and send it to you, um, but I probably won't. And Emanation. yeah, that's Sorry. annoying. Uh, first released in 2011. It's an annual release. We, this might give it away, so I'll save this for the conversation afterwards. Uh, seven different fillers, double binder of Honduran and Nicaraguan, seven by 50 Churchill. It has a coffin in the middle with a bellicoso. It's the Alec Bradley fine and rare that's produced, produced at Rice's Cubanos. Mm -hmm. 
this is a little bit pricier stick. It's it's not crazy. It's twenty four bucks. So that's still up there. Uh, we that's about were, the top that you will go. We were walking through the warehouse with Bradley, and there's a section that Alan keeps all of the prior Fine and Rares boxes from 2011, which was really freaking cool to see. I was a time um, machine, and I'd love to grab one from each box. But um, I, I was blown away by this cigar. I was 100% skeptical going into it. I will tell you that. The price for Alec Bradley, nonetheless, I didn't love. Uh, the artwork is phenomenal. The mm. band is, I mean, the band artwork is is just beautiful. And it was fantastic. Yeah, you were, I think, like three puffs in, and you immediately yeah. texted me a photo, and you were like, fuck. Yep. And I've said I've never... I was smoking the Churchill, and mm -hmm. and um, Char uh, Ernie brought the Bellicoso out for me to also have, and I sm lit it up instantly as well. I don't recall if there, there were a little bit of, uh, there were some differences in both, but I don't remember if I leaned towards one or the other. Yeah. But, um, and from what I've heard, I mean, Bradley and Alec both said that Alan is, that's, he said that that's, that's his, his favorite. Yep. Favorite year. So considering that was my first, I'm pretty excited about that. Yeah, that's definitely going to be one when it comes back around in 2020. I think that was the 2021. I don't think they had a 2022. Yeah, that's what Bradley um, was I, saying, I think. Yeah. Uh, and they released I, I will it not this sleep year on the, in June. I'll go out and find a, yeah. a five pack or a single whenever yeah. um, the 2023 comes out. Yeah, because, fantastic cigar. Yeah. Uh, yeah, well, you know, if you want to send me one, let me know. And uh, if your brick, brick and mortar still has some, buy me one and I'll, I'll Venmo you. Uh, for yeah, it. I actually was just thinking they might. I haven't been there in a couple of months um, ever since I had my new layer. But I will see. Yeah, well, let me know posted. on that one. So number four, you may say doesn't qualify. And I think you'll be surprised that it's at number four and not uh, higher. Yes, it doesn't qualify. Why? <laughs> I don't know. I'm just, okay. Well, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. For me, it's going to be Cigar Club Customs, June release origin. Um, and I'm putting this in as 2022 because I smoked the initial, I don't want to call it prototype blend, but I smoked the blend when we were down at La Isla in November of last year. But it wasn't until this year that I smoked the non-fresh, you know, because I smoked that right off the table, the initial blend right off the table because um, we rolled it right there as I made tweaks to the initial test blends. And so it wasn't until shortly before June of this year that I was able to smoke the rested, properly rested, properly, you know, rolled, aged version of Origin. Um, and so that's why I'm allowing myself to put it in the 2022 top 10 for me. Surprisingly, I mean, this cigar easily could have been number three, number two, number one for me because it will always, I will never smoke my last origin, put it that way. Um, you know, maybe on my deathbed, I will just to, to reminisce on it. But yeah, um, that cigar turned out not only for the first cigar that I rolled, um, but I think the actual blend itself came out wonderful. I know my yeah. dad smoked numerous ones. The yep. story, everything about that cigar is uh, came out to intention and uh, for that it comes in at number four for me yeah damn good cigar damn again it always everything qualifies we all make our own rules so that's true that's true um yeah great cigar great story all right enough about you mm -hmm. topping off the fireplace because i'm getting chilly don't blow up. Yeah, I should I should have brought a heater out, but I don't have an outlet close enough to plug in the heater, so uh, we're just chilling. <laughs> um, where are we? Number four. Number this four. This cigar uh, we released. I don't remember when we released it earlier this year. Um, it is just it, it, honest to God, it, it's probably one of the most unique cigars on my list. Um, it's from a brand that you love. Uh, it is a collaboration. Um, it is the second time that this brand has used uh per per Peruvian filler. Uh, so fillers from Nika in Peru. Okay. Um, and I think if I say this statement, it might come to you, quote unquote, traditional Cuban style blend.
Hit it, because I don't want to spoil. Serino and Ember Bygone. Oh, my God. I I totally forgot there's Peruvian in that cigar. Yep, which I think potentially I, just brings it to another level. Damn. I, I continue to tell people this cigar has some freaking strength, people. It uh, certainly. That's every a book. Time you I can't judge a book it, by its cover. Oh, my God. Every time I smoke it, I, I get a little bit shaky, which I kind of actually like. But... Um, uh, you know, w- w- the quote unquote traditional Cuban style blend, uh, to me, it slams a Cuban cigar, but I can see exactly why they're saying that. It's producer La Corona, five and a half by 48, fantastic size. Uh, Habano 2000, Medio Wrapper, um, beautiful artwork. Just a kick ass collaboration. Uh, I think it was an 89 by Half Wheel. I don't it was remember. A, it was an up, I think it was yeah, upper 80s maybe. on that one. Maybe. Um, Jesus, but that's it's a great that's a cigar. cigar that it is. I've, I've um, got a full box that is still saran wrapped, and I think I might have one loose in the humidor. Uh, mm-hmm. It's a cigar that I forget about, but I was going through pictures, and I'm like, it has to be on the list. I mean, yeah, it, it's. I, mean, it's I guess I so forgot good. that this was that was uh, I believe January, or maybe February of this year. I don't remember. Uh, that's a cigar that I forgot was this year. Yeah, I was unfortunate. I had to, I was out of space at the time. So I had to throw away the box. Yeah. Uh, so I just have some singles. I think I have like two or three left. Uh, phenomenal cigar. The box is beautiful. You can pick them up on Serena's website. Yep. They ship direct, which is really, really nice. Um, and did I say which blend of theirs was the first to include Peruvian filler? No, no I didn't. Do you have any guess? One that you love. Is it Wayfarer? No. Yeah, I don't think so. It's the Connecticut, right? Eleanor Rose. Ooh. Ooh. That was their first blend right. that they included mm. filler from Peru. So anyway. God, that cigar's good. Bygone. I would encourage you to have something on your stomach. Yes. Yes. Uh, Eat a little lunch, breakfast, dinner, snack. Yeah, it have is, a snack by if you have it's, it. It's so good. I actually might have that later today now that I'm thinking about it. So I know I got too many cigars that I need to smoke. I know I just need to live outside. I told Bailey next time she goes on a trip, I'm moving the entire office out to the garage. Yeah. And I'm just going to sit out here, dual screen, triple screen. Yeah. And live out in the garage for the week and just smoke cigars. Yep. Because I'm, I'm too backlogged and I'm always like, oh, I'm too lazy to move. I've got too much work to do. Or, I don't want to work just off the laptop screen because I need, you know, whatever yeah. for two monitors. So I'm not yeah. going to make excuses. No, no more. Great. Number three. Uh, little update no, number here. Four. Number four. Or, yeah, sorry. Number four. Yeah. This cigar. I mean. Yeah. The foot smoke on this one. That's why I was coughing earlier. It blew right in my face because I hadn't picked it up in a while. And it's just, it's just burning. Yeah. I no mean, touch ups. Goodness. I mean, I did a touch up just at the start because the heater was blowing yeah. some crazy wind. Uh, haven't had to relight. Construction, yeah. smoke output complex flavor oh it's amazing it is so coming in at number three this is a brand that i have had numerous people tell me to smoke Hmm. and it wasn't that i didn't trust them or ignore them it's just i didn't have the opportunity to smoke a cigar from this brand before um and when i did smoke this cigar i immediately said this is a box purchase and i purchased a box and that's going to be blackworks studio hyena uh, specifically the Lonsdale, which was a um, unique Vitola for small batch. So I got that cigar in, I smoked it, and I was absolutely floored with how good this cigar was. Yeah, I remember you um, saying that. And uh, I waited and, and I purchased a box over um, Thanksgiving. They had a, a great deal going on and uh, was too good to pass up. Snagged a box and mm-hmm. uh, Phenomenal. Definitely going to be a brand that I reach out to next year, 2023, to see about bringing those in. Griff, I think this is a cigar. I should have sent you one. It's okay. No hard feelings. Well, maybe I'll send you one. Um, and uh, I yeah, feel like I've smoked just, something from them, but just I, I don't recall. And so now I'm looking forward to smoking um, the rest of their, their lines and uh, just really seeing what else they have to offer because bl- f- f- floored. Yeah. My number three is also your, I don't remember what number it was, but it's on your list. 
There is a TikTok somewhere out there in the world of TikTok that I said this will be in my top three. Uh, I will smoke them back to back, and that is the Bocock Brothers Signature Series AJ collaboration. Yep. I knew it's that was going to be on your. Yeah. Uh, I knew that was going to be on your list, and I, I, I figured it'd be in your top five, yeah. if not top three. So we still have have three and five packs or whatever combos we're doing. Yep. On the website, I would highly recommend it if you like AJ whatsoever, uh, which I do. Um, and you yeah, like Bocock, where you never even heard of Bocock, I would really suggest you try them. Uh, the blend is is phenomenal, and it is. Uh, it's a little bit on the pricier side; it's around fourteen bucks, but um, five by fifty-two. It's it's or six by fifty-two. I don't remember. I don't remember. There's so much. Seems bigger than a five. Random by notion. Anyway, anyway um, rolling. It's just a fantastic cigar. My number three for 2022. Yeah, no surprise for sure. There. And I think I know what your top one will be. No. So I, I don't spoil it. If you guess my top one, I will give you a thousand dollars and I'll handshake. Okay, well then maybe right it's now. your top t- maybe it's number two. So I, I Yeah, I, I would think maybe back. you know it. Uh so coming in, number two for me. Uh I don't think my, my number one and number two could easily go one way or the other. Um, my one and number two are surprised. very different, which is interesting. Same. Very different. You will not be surprised by number my number one and number two. I've talked about uh, these cigars for a while now, uh, but coming at number two is going to be the La Polina Reserva 710. Mm. That cigar is first relight, by the way. It's I, yeah, I'm, I'm w- kind of want to see how long I could let this cigar go without it going out on its own. Um, but Reserva 710, we've talked about it since June. We were able to bring these in. It, it's everything that I want when I purchase a Opus, when I purchase uh, a, an aged Davidoff. When I want a cigar to just blow me away, when I want to sit down and really just think about the cigar, thinking about the notes that I'm taking or picking up, the artistry that goes into not only conceptualizing a blend, finalizing a blend, but also the process that goes into maintaining a cigar over time. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 the appreciation certainly ramps up um, the enjoyment of the cigar. I mean, for someone to consistently have to monitor a cigar for 18 years, I mean, yep. when I think of bourbon as well, someone will make a blend, they'll put it in a barrel. You don't know how it's going to be in 18 years or, no. or 15 years or 12 years. And so to to have the cigar turn out as good as it did after 18 years, uh, incredible. And uh, for that, it's number two for me. Yeah. That's awesome. We've talked about that cigar a good bit. It's, uh, you know, I don't want to say surprisingly because I I knew the majority of folks would like it, but we've gotten a lot of great feedback on that cigar. Yeah. I mean, if you've smoked it and you don't like it, let us know because I'm I'm curious, but I've not heard that yet. Um, It's it's been really great feedback. Um, My number two, folks... I know it. Do you think you do? Yeah. What's the brand start with? H. Letter. Yeah. Uh, this cigar was rolled, rolled at the brand new Tobacco's HVC in Nicaragua. Dark San Andreas wrapper, spice, pepper, dark, high proof bourbon. It's the selection number one uh, in, in the Cinciales, five and five ace by 46. At the unbelievable price of around seven dollars and fifty cents, which is just incredible and hard to. Believe. I have not smoked that yet, but I will be soon. Yeah, where it's shipping in some of the December boxes. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's his first cigar coming out of the his new brand new factory. He's got ten or twelve rollers, I think he said, which is impressive. Mm-hmm. Uh, Black Friday twenty twenty two came out of the factory as well, which is honest to god was very tough. It was either going to be Black Friday or number one um and i hate black friday as a seasonal release but um, I know you do. <laughs> but you all know i'm a big hvc lorenzo fan uh it's just the attention to detail yeah. he's not charging 30 bucks for this not charging 20 bucks i mean it's eight dollars i mean give me a freaking break yeah. um it, it's it's quite impressive and 
he really came out strong. And I'm excited to see what he continues to come out with at that factory. Yeah, you uh, you have talked about that cigar a lot. I've got one coming my way to uh, to smoke, so I'm, I'm excited to to smoke that cigar. Yeah. Number what one the time going to be your number one. You'll never guess it. I and it, it didn't even cross my mind. In all fairness, until I looked at the picture, um, and I think I have a couple left at the bottom of my humidor that I need to pull to the top. But it it blew me away. Is it a cigar? Did we? Have we carried it? We've shipped it. We've shipped it. Hmm. Okay. You'll never, you'll never guess it ever. Yeah, I know, I know, and I'm trying to because I want. It's that it's it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really <laughs> it's a brand that I don't ever talk about. And it's a scar I never talk about. Interesting. Yeah. I, I, I imagine once you say it, it'll it'll click. But uh, for me, coming in at number one, I said this from the moment that I smoked it. It would be my favorite cigar of the year. And it has proven itself correct. It is, it's, yeah, it's just perfect for me. And that's going to be the Villager Miami. Oh, I, you know, I thought about that. I did. It's every time I go back to that cigar, I'm like, there's no way it's going to be as good as I remember it. Robusto or Lancero? I have not smoked the Robusto. Oh, really? As recently as oh. I've smoked the Lancero. We smoked the prototype Robusto or the unbanded Robusto uh, at PCA. And, you know, that was fantastic. We were a little, yeah. we were smoked out at that point. Um, mm -hmm. And then I, I think I smoked one of the Robusto since then, but I've smoked multiple of the Lanceros. Um, and it's, it's, it's the single most Cuban profile I've had outside of a Cuban cigar. It's, I, that's it. I, I mean, I can't, yeah, describe just how much I enjoy that cigar. The profile is perfectly at my alley. It's got a little bit of strength to it, just like you would expect out of a Cuban cigar. Um, but I could smoke that morning or night and it it's morning just, is the best. It's great. The With Lancero to your, to your point, I think you like the Robusto more now. Yeah. The Lancero is one that you have to put a little work into. You just can't smoke it without thinking about it. You've got to smoke slowly. You got to make sure you don't overheat the cigar. Um, it's certainly one that you need to actively be a participant in yeah. as you smoke it, because if you over smoke it, it's either going to put you on your ass or yeah. being that Lancero Vitola, it may become a little squishy. You could overheat yeah. it and yep. kind of um, hide some of those nuanced flavors in it. So, um, you know, I think there's probably a, a, a time and a place for the Lancero and a time and a place for the Robusto. Yeah, agree. Phenomenal smoke. Love those guys and a beautiful looking cigar. Mm, I need to actually throw blue. some Robustos in my, um, either in my bag to Maryland or my truck box, actually. Yeah. The, Cause the that'd be great for anybody that's, I mean, again, it does have a little bit of strength, but just a touch it's, it's medium. Yeah. It, it's not, you would think you're looking at it like, Oh, this is probably a mile yeah. to medium. No, I think it's a medium can be medium yeah. plus, but yeah. the presentation, the boxes that blue yeah. pops with their gold, it pops yeah. against that. Um, kind of Connecticut looking rapper, Miami and, retro vibe. Yep. It's, it's, uh, they went all out on this one from, um, the blend to the presentation of it. Yeah. Agree. Number Take one, folks, what is it going to be? It is straight mild, no more than mild, which is so not my alley. I mean, it is sometimes, but, uh, coming in at $9 and around 30 cents. Which I mean, is crazy. I'm floored that there's a mild cigar coming in at, at number one for you. It was number three in CA's top 25 in 2011. So that tells you it's been around the freaking block. I think it was produced maybe in 2009. Um, it's more on the sweet. You know, when we talk about sweets, I just, again, I don't think about this cigar. I don't think about this brand. This brand has a lot of cigars. Uh, but it's more on the sweeter side. Um, again, straight mild. Not medium, in my opinion. I remember there being a mild cigar that you rolled at before. Rice's. Alec Bradley? No. It's the Illusione Epernay. Oh, fuck. Really? Yep. I, I mean, I, I do not doubt it. I had smoked it before this year, but I, even if that was the first time I smoked it, I think I wouldn't have thought to put yep. it because I was floored about 
how good that cigar was. When uh, me too, dude. I, I smoked it early this year. I'm like, oh shit, this is, and that's when we started carrying a lot of Louisiana or Mayhill. Is it last year? I don't remember. And then uh, I saw it in my box. I think I'd like an ultra number two as well, which I recently smoked and that was phenomenal. Um, but the Epernay, I, I think I messaged you. I messaged everyone. I'm like, what the actual hell? This thing is incredible. It is. And, I mean, the fact that it was number three on their list, Grand Hills, years ago, it says a lot. But um, Don knows what the hell he's doing and uh, super well known in the industry. And it's it's a killer blend. It's a it's an absolute killer blend. They make a, a, some great, great, great cigars, but this cigar is stand out to me. And um, if you never smoked it, order them now. Yeah, uh, it's it's solid, solid. Yeah, solid, that was solid. one I shipped to myself because I was like, oh, I smoked it before, but I hadn't smoked it in years, and I sent it to myself to to smoke. I smoked it, and I was like, oh my god! And I went to see if we had any more, yeah. and we didn't. And I was like, motherfucker! Like, damn! It's I mean, killer. That, yeah, I. I don't know wow. who sells it or, but I mean, the one I looked at was like, you know, nine bucks, nine twenty, and uh, it's number one. Wow. Yeah. It's so good. I mean, for you, I, that speaks volumes to anyone that may think they don't like a mild cigar. Yeah. For Griff to have that. Yeah. Above You'd think it'd be like Bocock, HVC. I mean, yeah. there's so many great cigars at double broadleaf. Mm-hmm. For those to beat out those medium to full bodied powerhouses, or I mean, powerhouses is too strong, yeah, yeah. Word, but those cigars, which I uh, associate with your profile and, and cigars yeah. that you like, that that speaks volume for the Epernay. Yeah, it's it's killer. Wow, really, really like it. And I maybe I'll smoke that again today. Well, who knows? I've got so many on the list, but that's a great list. That is a killer, killer top. So 10. we had we had signature series. Both. Yep. Uh, we had um, Chugui. Chugui. We had Double Broadleaf. Three out of ten. Three out of ten. Not bad. And I mean, the ones that you have smoked. Yeah. I mean, I, those could easily make my top ten for sure. Yeah. Um, whether if they were new to me or not. Um, not bad. Not bad. That's pretty damn good. I love this. this. Is one of my favorite things to do, and I, I've got to get better. I think I probably took. 75% of the cigars that I smoked this year's uh, photos, whether they went on yeah. IG or not, uh, I need to get better. But sometimes I'm like, I just don't feel like pulling out my phone or, you know, I'm in the I moment. Know, but it is, it is it. good to document because you can reflect. And I started yeah. out strong and then I just got sidetracked. And uh, But that just tells you that the more I was smoking throughout the year, the more I was not focusing on the cigar. I was yeah. doing something else. Yeah. Uh, if I take or a picture, I'm, like, I'm not doing shit. I'm smoking a cigar and having a drink yeah. or whatever. But if I don't, it's... Because there's something else going on. Yeah. Or there'll be, you know, sometimes we're, we're fortunate enough to maybe to smoke a, a pre-release just to see if we like it, uh, yeah. whether or not we want to bring it in. And a lot of times they're unbanded. And so I'll like, I'll take a photo of it. I'm like, I'm not going to know what the fuck this cigar is like. So, yeah. Um, wow. Great list. Great list. Wow. I like it. I like it. I like it. Um, well, we've got to do a giveaway. I'm going to be honest with you. I got nothing. Think about it. While we roll into the question of the day, think about a question or a, a giveaway. I've got the giveaway question. So see if there's anything popping in your head, Griff, for, for a giveaway. But uh, Yeah, I've got the giveaway. Beautiful. All right. So question of the show comes from Paco underscore MT. Paco. My favorite cigar is the Partagas 160, and they are almost out. What is a good replacement? <laughs> I answered to... this for Ramsey. <laughs> oh, well then, great. You've got the answer already, brother. We've already answered it, Paco. Uh, no, great question. Um, I believe I said the Placencia Alma del Campo, I think, was what I said or recommended. Um, shit, I'm drawing a blank. I think it was Alma del Campo. Okay. I don't I know. That, it, was one, it was one cigar that came to mind, Cubanesque style, mm-hmm. which... Unfortunately, I think is the word is overused these days. For sure. But a um, uh, fantastic cigar. Uh, you know, Placencia is a very well-known brand, premium brand, more expensive brand. So there's some similarities there. Um, so that's what I came up with. 
Great answer. I'm not going to input because I have never smoked that cigar um, or encountered that cigar. So I'm going to I'm gonna stick with your answer. Uh, but if you're looking for Cuban-esque, I'd also go Villager Robusto Miami. Yeah, or Bygone. If just, Shit. Or Bygone. Yeah, another great one. Yeah. Well, question of the show. Um, I want to know in the comments below, give us your top five cigars from 2022 that were new to yep. you um, or, you know, had were released in, in 2022. I would love to know what everyone's smoking. It's from a great anywhere. way for us to, yeah, um, great way for us to know uh, new brands. There are certain so many, so many small boutique brands out there, new lines from brands that we are familiar with, but haven't smoked yet or haven't had the opportunity to smoke. Um, let us know. I'd love to know what y'all are smoking. What's your favorites from 2022? Yeah. And uh, the giveaway, Griff. Depending we, we have this, we'll do a three pack, uh, a double broadleaf, a dose 77, and a um, Bocock signature. Okay. We may have most of those. If not, we'll double up. We'll uh, we'll we'll take a look and, and throw yeah. in uh, other cigars that we may have from um, yep. our top 10 that we shipped this year. But yeah. So comments below. Let us know what your top five of 2022 is, and uh, we will send out a uh, little little sampler from our top 10 that we have in stock and available to uh, to get out to you so you can kind of smoke along with those uh, yep. or smoke those cigars. But uh, this was great. We are wrapping up the year. Just a few more episodes left in 2022. I can't believe that this year is almost over. I know. Uh, Crazy. Flew by and already gearing up for a great 2023. Yep and uh, a good wrap to the year. So yep. thank you all for joining us. Uh, until next time, happy smoking. Smoke's in the good, damn it. Cheers. Cheers.